All right, this video is about graphing parabolas when the vertex is not at the origin. All right, so in the last lesson, we learned all about graphing par parabolas when the vertex was at the origin. So in all those parabolas, we'd have a vertex here on 0, 0, and you have some parabola shape, parabolic shape. Now, in this video, we have new formulas for standard form for a parabola. These new formulas are actually, they kind of trump the previous formulas. The reason why they trump them is they actually account for any coordinate for the vertex. So in these formulas, the vertex is coordinate hk. Um, it's directly related to the previous understanding. You have, have understanding for the vertex form of a parabola, for, or better yet, vertex form of a quadratic. Um, you learn that the vertex form was y equals to a x subtract h squared plus k, where those numbers h and k still appear in these new ones, except now they look a little different and they occur in different places, but it still represents the same thing. They still represent the vertex. So how we find it is whatever the sign is on h, you get the opposite sign in the vertex. Whatever the sign is on k, you get the opposite sign on the vertex. Also, h always goes with x, and k always goes with the y. Um, so, if x is getting squared, like here, it's still a parabola that goes up or down. If y is getting squared, it's still a parabola that's going left or right. Only difference is, now, instead of having a vertex at 0, 0 every single time, your vertex could be anywhere. Like, these are going to have vertex. The vertex may be here. You have some parabola that looks like this. And in this case, HK would be these numbers. That looks to be over 3, down 3. So in this case, um, if I know HK, I can know I, I plug in 3 and 3 for H and K. I have to have somewhere figured out what P is. But yeah, it still works a lot like the other stuff. Like P is still the distance to the focus. So if my focus was here, this length here still the value of p. Um, the only difference now is instead of like previous, if I knew p was 5 in my previous video on when the vertex is at 0, 0, if p is 5, you just go up to the number 5 and you put a dot. However, in these, p may not match the value in that coordinate because it's relative to where the vertex is. So that's kind of important. Here, the focus is p away from the vertex. So P is always, the, ver the focus is always going to be P away from the vertex, but unlike the previous videos, P may not be inside the actual order pair that represents the focus. It could be any number. So just keep that in mind. Also, we still have a directrix, and the directrix is negative P away. All right, so the directrix is negative p away from the vertex. Hopefully, this didn't cut off. To get, didn't get cut off by the by the screen casting on the bottom. But anyway, if if, you, if it does, directrix is negative p away from the vertex. So all those are still true, except again, it may not match the number it actually is now. It, it could be anything. It could be any place. For example, if the parabola was facing this direction, I need to know what p is, and from this place. I will count that far, and I'll figure out where to put my dot for my focus, and I'll count that far backwards to figure out where to put my line for my uh, for my directrix. So now you have to just keep those numbers in mind and, and make them relate to the numbers on your new graphs. All right, let's go a little further. All right, so just keep this in mind. This could be a parabola, and it doesn't have to be at the origin, 0, 0. This could be my origin. My parabola could be anywhere over there. All right, so my vertex is still whatever that coordinate is, h, k, h, comma, k. And my focus is p away from there. So this length here is equal to p. And I got a new word for you, and the new word is this. There's a name for the distance if I went straight to the sides from my focus Going straight to the side from my focus. This length is twice p, and this length is twice p. So the length from here 
to here equals a 4p. The name for that segment that goes through the focus can, uh, straight to the sides of the parabola, the name for that is lattice rectum. It's a Latin word. It says lattice rectum. Lattice rectum in Latin means straight to the sides. All right, so it means straight to the sides in Latin. All right, so um, that's what it means. And the lattice rectum equals 4P. So that equation, that 4P thing, the whole purpose is there. Somebody once upon a time decided this was a very important link, and they decided to use that link, and they gave it, they found that it was equal to 4P. So they, that's the reason why it appears in our formula so often. But yeah, this link connecting a segment through the focus to the parabola is always 4P. So I guess way back when, if they didn't have calculators and they had to graph this parabola, it was really nice to find out what that point was by simply measuring the link from here to the focus, and then doubling that link to the sides and doubling that link from that side. And all of a sudden, now you have a perfect parabola or uh, three points on the parabola. All right, so, anyway, so that's a new vocabulary. Let's go on and start doing some of these now. All right, so let's graph the parabola below. Um, and this is the equation for the parabola. All right, so I see y is getting squared, and I see that it must be in the form of y subtract h squared equals a 4p x subtract k. I use the right one of the formulas it's supposed to be equal to, so I can keep my letters in, in my head as what they are. So I know that the letters match this way. K is here. Actually, this is K. And this is H. All right. H goes to X. So I know H is here. K is there. And so that's true. Uh, the equation should be H and K. H and K is the vertex. So I know that my vertex has to be negative 2, positive 3, because you get the opposite of those signs. So that's my vertex, negative 2, positive 3. And I can plot that. Negative 2, positive 3 is over 2, up 3, your vertex. And from there, you need to know what P is. So 8 has equal to 4P. So I can now write, well, 4p equals 8, p equals 8 over 4, so p is 2. So I know my p value is 2. All right, so I think we're going to know enough to start graphing this. What I know for certain is y is getting squared and p is positive. So if y is getting squared and p is positive, I know there's a parabola that goes sideways. And so if I'm going to plot my P, I'm going to plot it to the right of it. So P is 2, so I'm going to go over 1, 2, and this is my focus. What's nice to know is if this is 2, I can go down twice that far to find another point in that parabola. So that's 2 away. I can go down 1, 2, 3, 4 away for this point and go up 4. So 1, 2, 3, that's probably about the fourth way up. So I got three points on that parabola. What? Yeah, that's three points on the parabola. So that's the important point. That's the important point. That's your focus. And again, how did I know? How did I know that this had to be four down? Remember, from the focus to the actual side, straight down, would has to be has to be twice p. So if p is two, that has to be twice two. So that's four. So that's my parabola graph. So that's my focus, and I need my directrix, so it's two behind. So my directrix is this line here. So now, the, actually, the coordinate for the uh, focus, the focus is at this coordinate. That's 0, 3. And your directrix is at this, at this line, 
So that's the line one, two, three, four, negative four. So the directrix is x equals negative four. So you notice they don't really relate to the number two at all. So you actually have to find it and then graph it after you found it. Whatever. There's some formulas you can create to find these numbers. I'd rather do it the way it makes better sense to me. But there are formulas you can make up on your own that's going to work every time. But I'll let you make them up on your own instead of telling you. Let's try another one. I'll pause this and get anything you didn't already know as a note because I'm about to clear this screen. All right, new example. So let's write the equation in standard form for a parabola and then graph it. Now, what's really important is you now have to know how to complete the square. So that's the reason why we reviewed that lesson on completing the square, because you can't answer this question without knowing that. So in order to complete the square for this, clearly the y is getting squared. So it must be the equation of this form. y subtract k squared equals to 4p x subtract h. So I must be trying to get it in this form, because I see y must be getting squared. So again, i got to figure out how to write this y part as a binomial squared. So I'm going to group together these two and move everything else away. So I'm going to subtract the 24x, subtract the 50 to the other side. At the same time, you can do it. So now we have 2y squared, subtract 4y, equals negative 24x, subtract 50. All right, from there, to prove the square, you know that the leading coefficient of y shouldn't be 2, so you have to factor out a 2. So that will leave you a y squared, subtract 2y, equals to this. All right, from there, from there I divide away the 2, so I don't have to think about that 2 anymore. So I write a new line, and I will divide everything by that 2. That's in front of y squared, in front of the parentheses. So I'm divide this by 2, divide this by 2. So that will leave you with y squared subtract 2y equals to negative 12x subtract 25. All right, and from there, i got to complete the square of these numbers, so I need to come up with this number c. So the c value, if half of negative 2 is, is negative 1, and you square that, you get positive 1. So it's this uh, plus 1 equals to negative 12x subtract 25. And I put a plus 1 here. And you put a plus one there on the other side of the equal sign. So my equation is valid because I just created a one that wasn't, that wasn't part of my problem. All right. So now, this left side factors. We made it so it factors. And it factors be y subtract one, y subtract one. So we'll call it y subtract one quantity squared. The right side, I got to, I got to add these. Negative 25 plus one. So that's going to be, negative 12x subtract 24, which is great that I came out to be this way because now I can easily see my GCF is negative 12 here. So I need to factor out negative 12. So my new equation is y subtract 1 squared equals to factor out negative 12, and now I got parentheses x plus 2. Now, what's really important is to have parentheses on the left and right side because this has a, a parentheses on the left and right side. So if you have, in fact, got a GCF on this side, you have to. And now I can see everything. I can see my vertex pretty easily. The vertex is at negative 2, positive 1. And I can find P. 4P has equal to negative 12. So 4P equals negative 12. And you should know P has to be negative 3. All right, P is negative. I know my vertex. I have to graph this. And... I'm running out of time, so let's go ahead and do this. Negative 2, 1 is my vertex, so over negative 2, up 1, it's a vertex. P is negative 3 away, and this is probably open to the left, so we'll go to the left. 1, 2, 3. All right, so I know I got to go up 6 and, and down 6 to find two more points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I know this is my parabola, and negative 3 behind there is my directrix. So that's it. You can write the coordinates for those if you need, but that's a process. That's all I have. I'll pause the video here and copy down all that as a note, but that's all I have. Good luck.